it got down there for October and now we're going to get down there for tomorrow and it's a very very big deal in my opinion if you believe in the long term aspects welcome to access a trader the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success profitability and longevity thank you for joining us here's dan shapiro to help you find your edge master your process and own your future Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Again, this short work week might, might catch on. Tomorrow's already the middle of the week, which is absolutely great. Uh, the year has not started off great for the bulls. The first two weeks of the year, you've seen selling. Again, usually, usually uh, the first quarter, the January, right? Remember about the January effect? Uh, people always talk about how much speculation money is going to come hit the market. Remember, nothing ha happens needs to happen. That's the, and that's the most important part uh, that we have to echo every single day uh, in our uh, daily thinking. Because again, the market is uh, the greatest reality show that's not on television. It doesn't need to go higher when it wants to. It doesn't need to go higher when it wants to. It doesn't need to go lower when it wants to. It's it's all about. Uh, individual spectrums that are hitting the landscape at any given year. Remember, there's certain years that are super bullish. Uh, the bulls can't do anything wrong. Buy the dip. You can walk on water. Everything is great in your life. And there's certain years that start off that, hey, just nothing makes sense. The market can't get out of its own way. No matter what happens, earnings are good, earnings are bad, stock prices are still going lower. And that's exactly uh, what we are seeing uh, at the start of the year. And if you guys remember uh, the weekend update that uh, I published yesterday, majority of the stocks were at the bottom, were right in the middle of the ranges, right? We, we talked about um, how there was no definitive area of the market that you wanted to be strong. I mean, sure, there's some names that looked pretty good in the semiconductor space. And we talked about them yesterday, the AMATs of the world, the micro of the world but if everything gets pulled right just keep this in mind if everything gets pulled and everything's in the middle of the ranges just kind of what we've been seeing now for the first part of the week nothing gets spared right i don't care what stock you're looking at what stock you think is strong no matter how strong that stock is it's not going to survive a tremendous tidal wave and that's exactly what we got hit today with and not only today again you can start compounding uh the whole start of the year uh but the index that's definitely leading us lower is the Russell, right? Is the is the IWM. And this was supposed to be the one that is going to outperform the January effect, right? The January effect. This is where every pumper and small cap, low float, everything is going higher. Buy this, but look, if there's money coming out of speculation capital, well, what do you think is gonna happen with the with the average stock? What do you think is gonna who's gonna support uh bids if the the market that is supposed to be the hottest market at this given time of the year can't survive. And when you look at a 3% decline uh, in the Russell, right, in the IWM, it's not a good thing. And it took out uh, the December 20 lows in the process. And now when you look at, uh, you know, if you look at the monthly chart, right, you got you have this whole area of this 202 area that's potentially measure potential for the next move lower. If you look at the Qs, right? Same thing, right? You got the same thing. This is a monthly chart. And on the monthly chart, everything looks good. Again, if I showed you this chart here, and this is a daily chart of the stock, you could, you could easily make an argument, hey, what's the big deal? The stock has just had a really, really big monster run, and now it's coming into rising support. And if we hold this rising support, it's gonna turn around. And this is why tomorrow is such a big day, because you're right. This is the monthly chart of the Qs. And every single time, right, it got down to the bottom of this rising wedge on January, February, March, right? March of 2021. It got down there for October. And now we're going to get down there for tomorrow. And it's a very, very big deal, in my opinion, if you believe in the long-term aspects of the bull market. And I'm not saying long-term as in 5, 10 years. Again, I do believe that we will be higher in 5, 10 years than you are today. But it's all about tomorrow, right? Especially if you are an active intraday trader, it's all about how you're seeing the market in the short-term basis. Again, if you're a long-term investor, it's probably not going to affect you, but maybe it will if you're a short-term and long-term investor and a kind of, you know, playing at almost in the same time frame. You have to be very, very careful there. But this area here is going to be very important. And if you look at the daily chart 
of the market. It kind of correlates exactly the same way. And if you look at the lows from January the 10th, only a week ago, and the lows today, the NASDAQ 100 held exactly the same level twice. Now, back-to-back -back days. So that's the line in the sand. This whole 369 level is going to be a very, very you know make-it-or-break-it battleground area tomorrow for the markets. So the last thing you want to see tomorrow, if you are a perma bull, is if we do have a little bit of a gap up, a little bit of a relief rally in the, at the open, the last thing you want to see is today's prices or the January the 10th prices confirm, and then you start making moves lower. Again, remember, we had a 2.5% decline today on the NASDAQ 100, a 3% decline on, on, on the Russell. That's speculation money. These are the stocks that people want to own. These are stocks that fund managers want to be long for three to five years. And if there is a buyer strike in technology and there's a buyer strike in quote unquote speculation money, the low floats, this, you know, this, that, the third, where's the action, right? Where's the, the confidence from the investor side of the market that we want to go higher? And the most important part of what we saw from today's session, we'll get to individual pivots in a second. The most important part we saw is what we needed to see. A lot of these stocks that were sitting in the middle of the ranges are starting to get to the bottom of the ranges. And that's the point, right? Look at Apple starting to get to the bottom of the range. Not there yet, but starting to. Look at NVIDIA, right? Very, very close of breaking down. Look at the home builders. And this is a group that I usually don't regularly look at, but they really, store, you know, they really stood out today uh, like sore thumbs when I started doing uh, my chart work. Like look at a stock, for example, uh, like a Lenar, right? Like look what Lenar is. It's coming on, on this bottom range here. This thing loses this whole bottom range here. Look how much room you, you have nothing. You have literally no support until you go all the way down to October uh, twenty uh, October 2021 lows. Very, very big. Look at DHI, right? Look at DHI, exactly the same thing. So we're starting to get to uh, other levels, uh, other groups that have nothing to do with technology, right? That maybe have been a safe haven for a very long time. Because again, if, if you're like me, and you live in a lot of parts of the United States. Real estate market has been hot. We had very, very, we still have very, very uh, low rates, despite what the, uh, what the, what the Fed is saying. We're going to raise rates 28 times in the next 30 minutes. So until we see that, we don't believe it. But again, if the housing stocks, right, the housing markets, market participants can't catch a bid. That's going to be a problem, right? That's obviously going to be a problem. And rising rates is obviously not a good thing for brand new home buyer, buyers or just buyers in general. And this is why you're seeing or starting to see weakness uh, in uh, in home builders as well. So it's one group uh, definitely to look at. But I, I think the names that are starting to go clear, I really like NVIDIA, okay? I really, really like this NVIDIA. Again, it's one of the cleanest channels you can see here. Very, very clean channel. We started seeing uh, two last week, 240 puts. Uh, this week's uh, 250 weeklies started trading. I'm telling you, if NVIDIA gets below this channel and starts building down, you got at least 11 to 15 points until the next support looks really, really good. Uh, we talked about Rivian uh, for the last couple of weeks. Uh, Rivian broke down every macro channel today. It took out that 77 level that, that held uh, three times. It held two weeks ago lows of 75. This is the lowest close in this whole formation. This thing has room uh, all the way to 63 uh, if the market starts uh, building lower. Uh, you know, look at a name like Spotify, right? Uh, Spotify as well. This is the lowest close in this whole formation. Now, granted, it's not the thickest stock in the world to trade. It only traded like a million and a half shares today. But the whole point is you're, you're going to start seeing a lot of stocks go from their middle of the channels all the way back to the bottom of the channels. And remember, it's pretty basic technical analysis. When stocks take out the top of the range, they go higher. If stocks take out the bottom of the range, well, they go lower. So going into tomorrow, uh, again, you're not going to see tons of charts at the bottom of the range, but you're going to see plenty. Uh, we talked about Spotify. We talked about in the video. We talked about the home builders. Uh, look at a name, you know, look at a name like uh, Airbnb. Again, it's all real estate developed, right? It's all real estate related. You know, look at this whole bottom of the channel here. It's setting up as well. So that looks good as well. But again, the key is going to be for the queues uh, back to back days, it stopped around that 369 level. That's the number in the line of the sand. Again, guys, technical analysis, it's not opinionated, it's not subjective. It's either going to confirm a channel, right? With this time it's a daily channel. It's either going to confirm a daily channel or they're going to hold it. There is nothing in between. You can't be a little bit pregnant. We're either gonna see 
a pretty good aggressive pull tomorrow off this 369 level or if we test this 369 level again the markets hold we're gonna go we're probably gonna go red to green for a pretty good dead cat rally that's it is that's kind of our reality so you have to kind of be uh set for uh both sides of the market tomorrow but again gun to my head uh, I do think this 369 folds, and if it does fold, we're going to start seeing a lot more aggressive uh, opportunities tomorrow uh, to the short side. So let's talk about today's channels. As you can imagine, uh, there, as you can imagine, you, you, we weren't going to see tons and tons of value to the downside because, again, there was a lot of downside channels that were still stuck in the middle. But we got enough and that's the most important you don't need 30 trades you don't need 60 trades you just need one you need two you need the ones that are going to give you value when they break that value that's where you're going to see your, your initial cash flow setting up into a macro move so let's talk about this uh rivian uh this is a really really good move i, I still think it goes lower uh 77 and 75 macro areas if it builds below can see 65 i still think we could see uh 65 to 62 uh if today's price channel uh confirms tomorrow a uh, nice move down all the way down to the 73 area today uh ba ba was actually pretty good until the market completely reversed uh dow got hit as well as you can see uh 227 needs to build nice initial pop on boeing uh 227 got to the 230 level nice move before uh it obviously came in with everything else uh amac keep an eye on this thing red to green obviously never got to red to green nvidia second entry 262 if it, if it builds can see that 256 that's the spot guys that is gonna be the magic number uh here was nvidia took out that 262 closed at the lows uh not, not the lows it closed uh, about a dollar away from the lows got down all the way down to 57s uh, again, this whole channel is the line in the sand for tomorrow. This thing breaks, lights out from the video. And again, we want to see more continuation from the options market. Uh, Microsoft, stubborn little bastard, but they finally got it below the channel. 30375, it builds below, can flush. Uh, Microsoft, again, there's a lot of buyers. They were defending that 404 level. Uh, this is the lowest close in this whole formation here on this rising support here. This thing starts confirming that 301 level. I think we go uh, 299s tomorrow on Microsoft. Uh, Boeing, again, take on the way up, right? Take on the way up. Uh, Rivian, right? At Rivian, 77, 75 macro. Any close on the 75 is bearish. Uh, obviously, that's the case. The one stock is actually two stocks that are holding up fairly well. One is this DWAC. For all you guys who kind of follow the stock, this is kind of like the, the, the alternative to uh, Twitter, right? It's like, you know, Trump got banned from Twitter, and this is now like the anti-Trump. I know nothing about this thing. I, I literally know nothing about this thing, uh, but it's been going nuts. And there was a buyer who came in today, right? It, it was kind of wild. But a buyer came in today for the January, for the March 175 calls, quarter of a million dollar bet, not for... The 75s, the hundreds, the dude came in for 175 calls. Read into that or read you know, as, as whatever you'd like, but the facts are facts, it's on the tape. So this thing looks like it's speeding up. And if this thing starts taking out yet today's channels tomorrow, who the hell knows? Oddly, this this kind of feels like what GameStop did in its in its little heyday after they were just started running up these these ridiculous options bet and next thing you know it kind of ignited who knows right who knows anything is possible in this world but the most important part here on planet earth is watching these channels uh just kind of uh deplete every single day and there's as they start getting lower and lower every single day you're going to have more and more aggressive channels setting up especially in tech technology but Again, the biggest worry should be what the Russell is doing or what the Russell actually is not doing. It's having its traditional hot rally, the January effect. Uh, so far, January has been a complete dud uh, for the speculation money and the overall bulls. We'll see. Again, value tomorrow obviously is to the downside, but that 369 uh, area on the queues is going to be a very, very important area for both bull and bear. Guys, have a great night. God bless, and I will see you all tomorrow.